Okay, guys. I'm over here on the 36 inch do all saw today. And I'm working on cutting some integral fittings for this. I'm going to forge weld them on. We're using tiles from the original billet that the blade is made from. Anyway, uh, so part of that consists of cutting off the scarfs on the tiles. Part of it consists on marking out width for fitting pieces and sawing. And in the middle of sawing one of these little lines, well, my blade bound. It was getting pretty dull. It was cutting off to one side. So I went ahead and had to weld up a new blade for this. Now I'm using Lennox carbon steel blade stock. It's not bimetal. I just got this carbon steel blade stock along with the welder. It's half inch wide, 14 tooth. And I've been having problems with my blade welder here on the saw actually getting a good quality weld. When I first got the saw, I got a few welds that were okay. There's a little bit of a learning curve, but uh, now I can't hardly get the weld to even stay together, let alone um, come out without breaking or be grindable to be a good looking weld. So I've fooled around with a few of the settings on this welder before. The main one on the front here is this. Yeah, the farther clockwise, the wider of a blade width it's set to. Well, this will only weld up to a half inch wide blade band. So I have it set all the way to the right and I fooled around with that a little, didn't improve things. Um, you can set these to have a little bit of a gap between the blade ends. Like a, a the do-all saw manual calls it a scant gap. That's what they, the technical lingo from uh, 1942 when this thing was made. Well, I played with that, didn't do any good any, anyway. Um, so, and it was, you know, welding, trying to do something. It just wouldn't really bond the blade. I would say it looked like the weld kind of burned out. Like the blade just burned back a little bit on both sides from being a weld. So I went to good old vintagemachinery.com. I went to the do all section of the manufacturer's index and I looked through the publication reprints available there, and there was one toward the bottom of the list that is a uh, blade welder specific manual covering several early models of these welders, including mine. So you can see mine is the model DBW-1. And uh, so I followed all the instructions pertaining to that blade welder and that manual. So if you're having problems with one of these welders, whether it's this mo model or another one, I would suggest going to Vintage Machinery, seeing if they have the product literature for you. And the nice thing is that reading through um, acquainted me with a few adjustments that were available in here beyond what I've done and beyond what you could see on the front. So uh, I'll just give you the rundown real quick of what mine needed. Uh, and then if yours needs something different, just uh, you know, read the manual, you'll probably find it in there. Uh, so check it out though. We're going to just actuate the lever here, right? See the jaw move a little bit. Now, the manual says, you see this little leaf spring contact switch there? See it open every time I actuate that weld lever? Well, it's supposed to open every time. Mine wasn't. And that's because the little slide rod that that whole assembly is mounted on with the jaw and everything to give it that 40 thou of travel. Every time you cycle the welder, it was hanging up in there because it was gunked up, you know, with some like decades old grease or corrosion. So... I, I oiled that, got it moving more freely so that this would open every time. The other thing about it was it wasn't opening the correct amount. So the blade welder manual was quite, kind enough to tell me roughly what this gap should be. Watch. See that open up? It said it should be from 130 seconds to 364. So I just sort of calculated that at, uh, roughly uh, transposed it to 
30 thou to 45 thou. And uh, it was open quite a bit wider than 45 thou. Um, so there is an adjustment screw in the end of this. And as the manual states, this is probably the most important adjustment in the entire welder. So if this is out of whack, it's just not gonna weld right. And if you're having a problem, chances are pretty good that it is related to this. So there's an Allen screw down in here on the end of this rod. And that just adjusts um, how far out the rod will actuate the switch to be open. So, and that affects the timing of the weld, how long the weld stays, the, the welding current actually stays running to the blade with tension on it before the cycle ends and the welding current is automatically shut off. Mine wasn't getting enough welding time. So it would start to spark, but it wouldn't get any time with current fused together to actually complete the weld. So I was able to actually uh, adjust this tighter, in my case, about a quarter turn to where the gap on this when open was smaller. And so I had longer weld time and a bigger flash to grind off after welding. Tried that, first weld on a new blade, boom, perfect. The other thing that the manual told me that I hadn't been super aware of was you wanted to press the lever, hold it down, you know, at least for five seconds until this thing is done welding and the blade has cooled off a little bit, you know, maybe seven or eight seconds. And then you can either let off of this, but what you really should do is while you're still holding this down, loosen one of these um, instead so that you're not like scoring any of the jaws here uh, by, by this being like forced to slide back on the blade when you let the tension up. So I did that. And then the proper thing to do for annealing is to take it out from deep in the jaws against this ledge where you had it for welding, pull it forward so that the teeth are just sticking out past the edge of the fronts of the jaws in the wide part of the gap, reclamp it there, and then cycle the anneal button, you know, first to an orange, then to a low red, then, you know, maybe to some six, seven, eight hundred degree temper heats real quick, just bump the button, take it out and grind it off. And uh, I actually found that it annealed more evenly um, and controllably out here at the end of the jaw. So that was pretty nice too. So now I'm pretty stoked on this old welder again, and I'm back in business um, sawing parts instead of fixing the saw or ordering a blade from my um, blade welding supply. Anyway, thought you all might like to kind of see that. Maybe it'll help somebody who has one of these old welders and it's just not working like they think it ought to. Cheers.